At the very heart of Bathurst's town square, in the beautiful public area of King's Parade, rises the imposing and iconic form of the Bathurst District Soldiers Memorial Carillion. The Carillion has played a central role in the Bathurst community for successive generations since its dedication in November 1933. It is a historically significant and a deeply sacred place, which above all else honours local citizens who have served and those who paid the supreme sacrifice for our country in all theatres of war over the last century. The Carillion also reflects the determination of the Bathurst community to properly honour their family, friends and neighbours. The story of the Carillion begins in the years immediately following the Great War of 1914 to 1918. This conflict profoundly affected the still young nation of Australia, including regional areas such as Bathurst, where 2,037 residents born in the district enlisted and left their homes to do their part. 932 of these were wounded, and 223 would never return. As early as 1915, as the conflict still raged, and in the aftermath of the Gallipoli campaign, the mayor of Bathurst, Mr. H.C. Beavis, who had three sons serve, one of whom was killed in action in Gallipoli, was the first to publicly suggest that a memorial to the fallen should be constructed. However, it was not until the early 1920s that the idea was revived, and a committee was formed to consider the proposal to build a memorial to the Great War in King's Parade, similar to the Boer War Memorial. Interestingly, the citizens of Bathurst at the time, including the returned servicemen, were not initially supportive of this proposal. However, this seems to have been less a matter of indifference than a desire to ensure that the city did not rush into so important a project. In particular, there was a strong sense that the project should not be merely a memorial of stone, but a structure of practical value that would benefit both current and future generations. Certainly, when the idea of constructing a Carillion was proposed in 1926, it seemed to galvanise the community. An editorial describing the Carillion in the National Advocate on the day of its eventual opening on Wednesday 11th of November 1933 eloquently summed up the intent of its construction. Bathurst had the ambition and courage to aim at a memorial entirely without utilitarian character. A singing tower, a pure work of art, musical and architectural. That was a line of greatest difficulty, but the beautiful City of the Plains had to think first of beauty in its war memorial if it was to be true to itself. Carillions date back to the later medieval period in Europe, when the traditional ringing of church bells developed into the use of bells to play melodic musical compositions. These mighty instruments, customarily located in a tower, consist of a minimum of 23 tuned cast bronze bells, generally covering three or four octaves, and played from a clavier or keyboard. The first true Carillions originated in Flanders in modern Belgium and spread widely throughout Belgium, the Netherlands and northern France, precisely the region that was to become the Western Front upon which approximately 300,000 diggers would serve in the Great War of 1914 to 1918. A contemporary leaflet printed in Bathurst to promote the Carillion idea describes it as a magnificent musical instrument with considerable range upon which can be played many popular airs and classical music. It is essentially a public instrument. Public because it cannot be shut within four walls. Its music is the most democratic of all. It makes music for the masses. The whole comprises a most fitting memorial in a delightful setting. A design for the new Carillion by architect John Drummond Moore was exhibited and accepted and the location at the centre of King's Parade confirmed. An order for the bells was placed with the famous Taylor's Bell Foundry in Lounsborough, England. Having commenced construction, the money now needed to be found to finance the project. The required funds did not come from the government, but rather were raised entirely by the community of Bathurst and its surrounding villages. This achievement, a clear statement of civic pride and determination, is all the more remarkable given that the majority of work was to occur during the difficult early years of the Great Depression. Almost £8,000, $825,000 in 2019 value, 
was raised through a variety of community activities including dances, sporting events, firewood drives, flower sales, and the Buy a Brick campaign, which funded the 212,000 locally made red bricks by selling them at tuppence each, or six for a shilling. The last brick was laid at 2.50pm on the 24th of April 1933, and the first ever Anzac service held at the Carillion the next day. On Armistice Day, the 11th of November 1933, a massive crowd estimated at 15,000 attended the official opening performed by Mayor Martin Griffin. The words of Alderman Griffin admirably captured the sentiment of the occasion. If we want this day to live in our memory and be a lasting benefit to us and the generations to come, let us, standing at the foot of the memorial, register a vow that we will endeavour to emulate that spirit of loyalty, determination and self-sacrifice so nobly displayed by our Australian men and women during 1914 to 1918. The completed tower stands 30 metres high and sits on 15 metre deep foundations. The Carillion itself, the enormous musical instrument within the structure, featured 35 bells arranged in three tiers, with the smallest bell weighing 8 kilograms and the largest 1.5 tonnes, to a cumulative weight of over 8 tonnes, an arrangement upgraded in 2018 with the addition of a fourth tier and a top octave consisting of an additional 12 bells. The interior of the Carillion Tower comprises three internal levels. The design itself is unique, being based on the 17th century Flanders design. The first level contains the memorial chamber. Plans for the chamber to hold a memorial lamp had been discussed as early as 1929. However, it wasn't until 1965 that the eternal flame was lit at the Anzac Day dawn service. This gas flame was to burn for the next 54 years, before itself being replaced by a bronze sculpture. An ascent of some 60 stairs brings you to the second floor which houses the apparatus for playing the Carillion itself. The original plan had called for this to be a complete hand and foot clavier, the traditional instrument that allows the bells to be played with full musical expression and harmonic range. However, a funding shortfall of 428 pounds four shillings by November 1933 did not allow for this final purchase, and the Carillion was instead to be played by an ivory keyboard. This was later augmented with a computer. The difference in approach is significant. A clavier will control clappers fitted inside the bells, whereas the current electric system uses electromagnetic hammers on the outside of the bells. Now, however, 87 years after the bells first rang, the Carillion is finally to be completed thanks to funding from the Federal Government's Armistice Centenary Grants Program, the New South Wales State Government, and the coordinating efforts of Bathurst Regional Council and dedicated volunteer groups from the Bathurst community. The third and top layer is accessed via a five metre climb up a ladder. This is the bell chamber, housing the brass bells and network of supporting steel framework. 47 bells rest in four tiers. The largest and heaviest bell, known as the Bourdon in a Carillion, has a mouth diameter of 1.3 metres, and upon this bell the English bell founders cast the following. Thus Bathurst and her surrounding villages honour the men of 1914 to 1918, lest we forget. The second largest bell is inscribed to the ever-glorious memory of our fallen comrades, greater love has no man than that he laid down his life for his friends. Whilst the third largest bell carries the Red Cross emblem in honour of the war nurses who served. Many villagers in the region subscribed for a bell in their name to honour those from their communities who had served and to assist with the initial fundraising efforts. In the years since the dedication of the Carillion in November 1933, Australia has faced additional conflicts, and the men and women of Bathurst have stepped up to serve. The Carillion has remained the Bathurst community's ongoing symbol of appreciation and utmost respect for all whom have served in all theatres, including the contemporary work of our 21st century peacekeepers. The ongoing respect of the Bathurst community for the structure 
justifies the hope of those who financed and constructed it that, as the National Advocate stated in an edition of the 18th of June 1929, it will ever remain as a concrete symbol of the appreciation of the present generation of those it is their privilege to honour. When you have a look at the Bathurst War Memorial Carillion, it's a reminder to each and every one of us of those men and women that have sacrificed their lives for us to endure the freedom that we have here today. And we in this area have made a huge contribution when it's come to fighting various wars over time. We're very proud of their legacy, very proud of their commitment, and that is exactly why this Carillion is important to our community.